Morning, automotive students. Uh, we're going to take a look at a wheel speed sensor. We're going to look at the scope pattern. This is a 2020 Terrain. So let's take a look. All right, so there's a schematic. I'm looking at the right front wheel speed sensor. So in order to uh, probe the correct wire, I'm going to see which one is my signal wire. Now, I'm going to try to do this without shaking things up too much. But right here, this is going to be my signal. This is my ground or the low reference or the sensor return. So this is the wire I want to get into. So I'm looking at the green and brown wire. And uh, we're going to have to go up to the pigtail. So next thing now is finding the pigtail. And again, we're going to look at terminal one, the green and brown wire. All right, so we see the wheel speed sensor. Yeah, right in there. So if I follow that wire around, I gotta figure out where to back probe that. And it ends up going right to here. So you can see I've already got the scope lead attached. It's on terminal one, green and brown wire. And I've got it the other end of this to a known ground. Uh, if I end up with a dirty signal, then what I might do is back probe that signal return or the ground signal and then put my black lead there. But we're gonna give it a shot with normal ground. Uh, that way I don't take the chance of these two wires touching and uh, skewing my information. All right, let's talk a little bit about the picoscope setup. Right now, I know that this is sending 12 volts out through the signal wire and it is going to create a signal basically riding on top of that 12 volt. All right, so we're gonna spin it, take a look and see what the pattern is. Now I'm gonna go ahead and freeze it, the pattern. All right, now if we look at this, unless you're zoomed in properly, you're really not going to see much of a square wave. Now with the Pico scope, one of the lovely things about this is that you can go ahead and zoom in. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this magnifying glass there, the one with the, the square in it, where the brackets. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight a portion of this. So I'll click from here, maybe over to about there. Right, now I'm zoomed way in, and you can see that we do have a square wave pattern. Now, there is a little bit of noise, and uh, you know, in some cases that's to be expected. Uh, in this case, if I were to change my ground side, I am probably not going to improve this, so I'm not even going to worry about doing that. All right, so let's take a look. I've got a square wave rising above and below, and in this case it looks like it's somewhere right around 11.83 volts. Uh, I can smooth this out a little bit if I don't like some of this uh, hash there. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the filter on. And putting the filter in, it's just going to smooth that line out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and tell it, yep, turn the filter on. Okay, now here I've got again a pretty clean pattern. And if I wanted to, then I could use my cursors and see what the bolts are. So I've got one cursor there, right about. Take the other one here. All right, and there we can see 11.71 volts, 11.93 volts, and we've got a total voltage there, 222 millivolts, this thing riding up and down. So again, depending on your scope and your resolution, you really might not see a square wave at all. Now the nice thing with the Pico is it does allow me to zoom in, and it's got great resolution, so I am able to see the square wave without any kind of special considerations. But let me show you another one, just in case you've got a scope that doesn't allow you to zoom in like this. Our snap-on scopes that you've all used do not allow us to zoom in. So what we're going to do, we're going to set this thing up so we can measure uh, with the AC coupling. So with the Pico, you come over here, hit the AC coupling, and let me get rid of that. All right, so we're gonna use AC coupling, and with the Pico, you just come over here and you put AC. Now, if you remember with the snap-on scopes, you had to go down into the uh, bottom portion of this screen, and you can choose AC that way. Now, what the AC coupling is gonna do for us is it is basically gonna take any of these fluctuations, if you will, in our cases, they're gonna be square waves, uh, and it's going to center it right at the zero line. Now, I need to get out of the zoom portion here, Zoom. There we go. All right. So now you can see we've centered our line here, and go ahead, we'll go ahead and spin that and see what we've got. Okay. I'm going to stop it here and take a look. And again, I'll back up. 
You can see we get a little bit of a waveform, but it doesn't look like a whole lot. With it an AC coupling, it is going to again center that pattern right around the zero line. And now what it's going to allow me to do is to change my voltage per division. So we're going to drop this down. We'll go to maybe one volt per division. I could go even lower if I want to, but we'll try one volt per division and then we'll see what it does for us. So we'll go ahead and spin it again. All right, now spinning again, you can see that we're rising above and below our zero. Now, with AC coupling, sometimes we get a little bit of a skewing here. That's nothing to worry about. But again, if you're running a, again, the scope doesn't allow you to zoom, uh, AC coupling is going to allow you then to decrease your voltage scale and hopefully pick up a pretty good pattern there. All right, let me show you one other thing about this. If you use Pico a lot and you rely on the menu here to set things up, uh, you're going to have a little trouble with this type of sensor. So let me show you what I mean. We go into sensors, we'll take a look at ABS, and we're going to take a look at our digital signals. Uh, we might look at the magneto resistant there. But again, you're tempted to go to digital here. And with the digital, this particular one is giving you a signal that's nowhere near what uh, our sensors are. So again, this may be a little frustrating to you. So you're gonna have to use your head a little bit. You know, if your pattern doesn't look anything like this, well then this is the incorrect setup. So we'll go back and we'll take a look at that magneto resistive and see if it's gonna give us a better picture there. So sensors, ABS, the magneto resistive. little description there and that is not exactly what we're looking at either it's fairly close so again you're gonna have to use your head if you're gonna go in and let the Pico tell you how to set things up uh, I just prefer to go in and set it up myself until I get a good pattern then I'm good uh, but again if you rely heavily on the menu to do your setup for you uh, you might have to go through a couple different of these before you get it. Now one other thing that they're looking at here as well, which we're probably not going to be able to do, they are looking at amperage. Uh, most of these sensors are going to have basically two different current steps there. And I think these are running at uh, 7 milliamps and 14 milliamps. Now, depending on the type of probe that you use, you're not going to be able to pick that up. Unless you open the circuit, insert a times 10 multiplier, and then place your current probe around it. Or, if you've got one of the expensive microamp probes, you'll be able to see that. But, again, you'll probably run into quite a bit of noise, like they're showing you here. And this is even noisier than what we saw. So, again, some options you've got when you're looking at the wheel speed sensors. Uh, I just want you to be aware, again, AC coupling might be your best friend if you're looking at a small alternating type waveform with a scope that doesn't give you the zoom capability. All right, I think that's all I've got. Thanks for watching.